This is literally the video that doesn't want to get made because we had equipment malfunction three times in a row. Three times in a row I'm trying to make this video. So I ordered some stuff. Some of the stuff came in this nondescript antiseptic bag and these attractive decorative boxes. Some of you already know what this is, but it's a soldering iron, all right. But that's not what's exciting. <laughs> There's a RISC-V microprocessor in here operating at over 100 megahertz. 128 kilobytes of flash, 32 kilobytes of SRAM, and a soldering iron. It's more likely than you think. We're gonna take a look. All right, so first up, this is the pine soul. Yeah, it's a soldering pencil, soldering iron. See, it's a pine soul from the, the pine people, the pine project, pine project people. Oh, there's a lot of words to start with. I should have done that thing that I did in the Ryzen uh, 5000 introduction where I came up with a bunch of words to start with R and read that. Some people got it, some people didn't. I don't know. Was that a mistake? I don't know. So, check it out. Soldering iron. This is a standard TS100 tip. Um, the body is actually styled after another sort of quasi-portable soldering iron. And you may be wondering, why does your soldering iron need a microprocessor? That's a thing that doesn't normally need microprocessors. And usually I'm very anti that. It's like, oh, it's a cloud-enabled soldering iron. What, what fresh hell is this? The specific chipset in here is the GigaDrive GD32VF103TB. That's a 32-bit RISC-V Bumblebee core at 108 megahertz. This is running Rollum's RTOS build, a real-time op operating system on a soldering iron. What a time to be alive. It is FCC certified and uh, ROHS compliant as well. So kudos, nice job on getting the certifications. I know how much of a headache that can be. This is actually kind of useful because the microprocessor in here can monitor the temperature of the tip and apply more or less power to keep the tip from overheating. Auto shut off, it's programmable, you can program the curves. Depending on what kind of a soldering tip that you're using, you could have the chisel type as opposed to the point type that I've got on, on here now. And how heat is dissipated through the tip and how much temperature has to be put in uh, is a little more complicated than just, you know, the, the typical analog circuit that you would find in a normal soldering iron. Also, USB-C. The soldering iron will take USB-C as a power input from 12 to 20 volts, as well as a standard DC uh, 2225 DC jack. Double, double check the specs on that. Don't, don't quote me on the DC barrel jack. But the uh, power negotiation, power delivery circuitry here also depends on having a microprocessor because, well, USB-C, it can carry data, it can carry voltage, you can charge a laptop with it. This thing can dissipate 65 watts. You do need a microprocessor in order to properly be able to negotiate those things. Further, there's a two-line OLED screen on this, and you've got, you know, plus and minus buttons. So a lot of this you can control right from the user interface of the soldering iron. So, of course, you have basic controls like uh, temperature. I want, to, I want to hit this target temperature. You also have the option to limit power draw. So, for example, if you are using a USB-C battery bank that can't deliver the full 65 watts at peak this thing could theoretically potentially use, you could limit that to 25 watts or 45 watts or, or whatever. The firmware is also... Uh, flashable, so if you want to develop your own firmware and do some fun stuff with that, you can. The schematics are available on the internet. I mean, it's a pretty awesome open project that, uh, you know, basically goes above and beyond. I'm, I'm running firmware 2.12 from 12.11 of 2020, but, uh, you know, you've got some options here. I've, I've hit the button to wake it up, and it's going to zoom up to, you know, 350, 360 degrees C to be able to use that really awesome ROHS uh, solder, but oh, look at that. We can see the smoke. It's, it's getting hot. It's melting the solder, the, the solder remnants that were on here because I didn't clean the tip really super good. It has an automatic shut off that you can set. You can set it for left or right handed operation. So if it's left handed operation, it'll flip the screen. You can also flip the plus and minus buttons. Use the plus and minus buttons to navigate. I also got this breakout dev board thing. So you have to check the schematics for this, but you can develop your own RISC-V applications, <laughs> plugins. There's an app store for my soldering iron. Yeah, that's basically where we're at. You can use this uh, dev board to develop your own stuff for the soldering iron, and it plugs in line. So this is USB-C. It'll, it'll plug right in with your power delivery or whatever else you got, and uh, gives you access to some, uh, some of the stuff that's available on the, uh, the RISC-V interface. So pretty awesome. I haven't done anything with that yet. The other thing is is price. So to support the project, I ordered the Pinesel as well as a bunch more of 
TS100 tips. These are standard tips though. You don't have to order the tips through them. It's just that they had they had an assortment. All of this together was less than $100. The um, soldering iron itself is about $25 US before shipping or anything like that. This is about four or five bucks. So all together 30 bucks for a soldering iron, one tip, and this, pretty darn good. I'm usually doing a lot of really super tiny soldering. So uh, one of the kits has mostly really tiny soldering tips, but because it's got the sensor in here and because it's adjustable and because you can reprogram the calibration and this, that, and the other, this makes it a really delightful soldering experience. I did a, uh, a little bit of soldering here on my uh, frequency counter. This is a sort of a, a hodgepodge, you know, 7780 based, nothing special um, frequency counter, which is useful for looking at what, what speed a pin is flapping. And uh, this is all hand soldered, and uh, it was a joy to solder on this at that time. So I've done a couple of projects with it now, and uh, I've been very, very, uh, very, very satisfied with uh, with what it does and how it performs, and, and the interchangeability and, and all that. I never would have thought that uh, a portable soldering iron like this would be uh, as cool and useful as it is. Even even doing a hard power cycle, it knows that it's not, not it's not still heating the tip but it's reading the temperature of the tip to warm me. It's like, hey, even though I've been unplugged for a few minutes, the tip is still like 289 degrees here. They've done a really good job putting this together. I'm, I'm genuinely just, I mean, risk five in a soldering iron, but I'm sold. This is actually a really cool project. I'm Little This is Level One. If you decide to pick up one of these and you want to share some action shots, come to the forum, Level One forums. I'm signing out and I will see you there.